I am Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and today I'm going to be showing you how you can easily paint this adorable fluffy bee on this cute little clover. It doesn't take a lot of brushes, it doesn't take a lot of colors, and it's very beginner friendly. I'm going to explain to you how to make it step by step. On the mic is my husband, John. Hi, guys. He's going to be tracking me with the cameras, dealing with camera technical repair, as many of you <laughs> who are in the waiting room are well aware. <laughs> that was quite a journey. <laughs> Anyways, it looks like we're... Here I am, that all worked out really, really well. Let's go over the materials super quick. So I have a nine by 12 canvas board here that I have painted this on. This is what we're gonna be doing. Don't worry if you don't draw, there is a free traceable. Put this to the side as my reference. So I've got a blank one here that I put some wishes on. We've got a wish from Kathy. Um, she's wishing for healing for her husband, Lily, for Hydra Dentist, uh, more understanding, more treatment, more cure. Uh, strength and healing for Christy's daughter, uh, safety for those who are dealing uh, on the west coast with the fires, um, Guinevere, uh, easy transition to mute, move, um, a cure for colony collapse, and then safety on the east coast. Look, 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 all of our coasts, just everybody be safe. There's a lot of flood and fire happening right now, so it's just time to be safe, and let's all put wishes on our canvas that everybody is all right, and peace, that their peace, loved peace, ones peace, are peace, okay. Peace. Hugs, mm -hmm. hugs, hugs, hugs. Just peace, okay. peace, 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 peace. And hugs, 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 hugs. Peace, peace, peace. Hugs, hugs, hugs. Safe, safe, safe. That's what we're wishing for. Come Over from love. here on our materials, I've got a little, I'm going to be doing all Holbein paint today. Really like Holbein. This is a pro acrylic paint. Um, it's incredibly pigmented and it has very little drag on the brush. It has a high blendability. So this is phthalo blue, phthalo green. We have uh, cad yellow medium. We have quinacridone magenta. I have a little bit of my Mars black. I have titanium white. And then I have a fluid white, uh, white, titanium white, and then lamp back. But any black, these are just like the kind of consistency of craft paints. Palette knife, couple of cat's tines, number eight. I got a number two filbert, just dropped a detail right on the floor. And a number six Cambridge. I guess I'll be getting another little detail. I'm going to be just painting with like, you know, a detail one or zero about in that range in the rounds. So, just a little tiny, tiny bit. And that's all we're going to do. And then, of course, my flat paddle brush. So first, the first fun part that we're going to do is we're going to take one part of our blue and one part of our green, and we're going to mix them together. And we make phthalo turquoise when we do this. This is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite colors. I think it's a lot of fun. I Pretty much only work with paint companies that have these as a color option. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get a little wet wipe here. My crafting friends are like, you got to get on the wet wipe train. And the I was like, really? Wipes. And they said, yeah, because it makes short work of this stuff. And I was like, wow, it really does. So a little bit of less prep after the show. So weird crafting tip that I got. All right, once I have that there, I'm going to get my number two in. This is a two inch little brush. Sometimes you can find these in Ross. We call them Ross Rescues. And these are available online too. And they're available online, and you can check the website for lots and lots of locations. They're not expensive. I'm loading up with white paint, and I'm going to paint the whole canvas with a sort of juicy coat of white fur. Not strange that I'm doing that, but I am. Hmm. And uh, what I found is, is that it helps you get a nice blend going on your canvas. And also, it's incredibly uh, helpful with not getting your background too dark. Sometimes I have a tendency to work like, you know, an 1800s <laughs> romantic heads and painter. So I can get a little dark and, and dramatic. Oh. All right, I'm going to get a little of my phthalo blue, the phthalo turquoise right here. And I'll load it with some white. If you're having any trouble at all brushing it on the canvas, then you know you maybe have just not enough water in there. And see how I can just loosely brush this now? And it creates like this sort of beautiful, breathy background sky. And so oh. softly blended into the, the white background. And I'm just brushing at a diagonal from the upper right corner down to the lower left. And that's all it takes. 
put in that whole background, which I think is pretty spectacular. Hmm. So I'm very, very into that. Now, to do the next part, I'm going to definitely want to dry that. And John says that I can run the hair dryer now while the AC is going on. I think on. so. Let's find out if that's actually true. All right, we'll find out. Okay. Or not. So hold on a second. That's... Again. All right, let me go fix that. <laughs> My turn. That is... It has some coffee. John's under my feet, under the table. I heard it. Ta-da. Okay, so if you're using your hair dryer at home, make sure you use it on the lowest heat setting. That way uh, you don't have any um, uh, heat-induced color dis uh, distortion, you know, shrinkage on your lower, uh, your, your lower budget paints. You can see that generally in pro paints, you don't have any problem with that though. So, uh, but just, it's just good practice. Um, and gosh, thank you guys for joining us today. It's really, you know, super nice to have everybody just sort of joining us on a Wednesday afternoon, especially when I was running so late. Um, Mr. Robocam over here, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's not the standard kind of camera that I use the other ones. We, we have broadcast cameras on a lot of other stuff, but this is one of my older cameras and um, it has a standard a standard cable that would go from a video to a little, uh, to a device that converts it to a broadcast. And of all the strange things that went wrong, that cable just went out today. It's the same cable that I've used forever and ever and ever. There were other cables that also, like power cables and things that, you know, that go out that I have, that would I expect more, things that I move around a lot. But that one just sort of, uh, just died today and it took us for it took us a while to figure out where it was oh was, you just like our camera adventures yeah it's just it's very strange sometimes how how uh, everything even goes yeah so i am gonna actually show everybody how to draw the bee in but of course you have the traceable so if you don't draw don't feel like pressure but i got a lot of questions about that so i was like oh i will definitely show i'm gonna take my number six cambridge i'm gonna load a little white on it and a smidge a just smidgy smidge of black and this is really a lot so you can see the sketch in normally I would just sketch this in with chalk but that way you can kind of see what we're doing I want to make sure that I have room for my bee in my upper corner so I'm gonna come in a few inches and make a little curved line that curved line is about four inches long and then I'm gonna come to the front and I'm going to make a, kind of like a parentheses or a comma right and He's so fluffy, I just need to know about how much space he's taking up. So this really isn't about like having a great rendering in. I just want to make sure that I've got some room for a little bee here. A little bumbly bee. Yeah. So I was just uh, noticing that we ha I have to, I'm going to try to load up your uh, hmm? guy here for picture in picture, uh, but I was having a little trouble. His that cup. is the day today, isn't it? It is, man. But I'm having just... a little trouble day. But I'll get it. Don't worry. Ah, oh, the ether. Energy's in the ether. So, because I've left about a hand's worth of distance from the back of my bee to the corner, that's going to leave me a little room for wings and lots of room to put in my wonderful clover. Now, I'm going to show He's you with just a little white paint because I can paint over it easily. I'm going to want to have the clover take up a good section right here. I'm just You don't sketch this. I'm just showing you right, of the painting. So I need to mentally space out at least that much, you know, round room around here. You know, so if I put my hand in here. It's like on either side of my hand. I feel like I do have a measuring device. Ah, just to give you an idea. This is about six inches, so six inch in diameter little circle. And then I'm going to go ahead and give myself a little guiding stem line that's curving off the painting. Okay, so once I know where everything is, I get to do some fun, fun things. I'm going to paint the bee after the clover's in because some of his fluffiness would go over the clover. And so I would want to layer that last. I'm going to dip my number eight cat's tongue in some water. You can see I dip it in and drag off the extra. And I do a cool thing. I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to work 
my white paint into it. See how I'm doing? Yeah. I'm working my white paint into it. If you're in an area where things are drying out really quickly, you can use, uh, I have a product in the list called uh, Glazing Medium, and that can help you quite a lot if you're trying to get that in there. Now I'm going to get a smidge of my pad yellow into this mix, and just a little bit of the loosely mixed pink. There we go, just getting a soft pink. See how that brush is super loaded? And I'm going to come right here, and you guys are going to love this. I'm going to just press in and curl a little brush stroke. You can do this with a filbert or a cat's tongue or a big fat round. I'm mm. going to come around my circle a little bit. I might encroach into my B a little bit. I know I can put him back. So when I have those in, I'm going to offload just a little of my white, get it worked back in. I'm going to get some more of my pink in here and some more of my yellow. And see, I'm just making a loosely mixed, slightly darker color. And I'm going to come right here, and again, just layer in these little petals. Cheryl would like to know if you're going to do some more bees in this style. She yes, there's going to be, like owls, there's going to be fluffy bees. She likes the fluffy bee. Oh, my God, too. They're so cute. <laughs> I think they're just like exciting right now. Yeah. I think the little bees are exciting right now. I'm going to add a little more yellow into this pink mix. So as I'm going, I'm just getting darker and pinker as I go down. She, she I want to go a little darker than I have there. There we go. There we go. We want to definitely be able to see the transition of our clover. Just going to darker and darker layers? Yeah, I'm going to be going darker and darker layers as I go down. You can see I'm just coming back, and that just pops it in. Maybe get a little yellow this time. I might dip in water just to make sure that my brush is flowing paint well. I'm going to get a lot more pink on here. Smidge of the white, but a lot more pink. Ah, there we go. See how it just gets a shade darker as it goes down? That's what you want. And then on this last one, I'm going to really get some of my pink. And there we go. I'll just finish it out with that darker oh, yeah. pink. And then that gives you just a perfect, fat, wonderful little clover. Rinse, 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 rinse. Rinse, rinse, rinse. And we're going to let that have a little bit of a dry. And I'm going to go ahead and hit that with my hair dryer so you don't have to literally watch my paint dry. As you literally watch this, like it's we would, all we will watch you dry the paint instead of watching the paint dry. <laughs> right, we're gonna dry. Woo! All right. So while she's doing that, and you know, we're testing out the new limits of how electrical has been removed in the in the studio. There's a lot of studio changes happening behind the scenes. Um, it's it's remarkable how much things can change but look the same. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah, studio, lots of studio changes happening all around. So we're re rerouting power and moving things about and uh, making making changes here and there. And so you should see some improvements um, as we as we cruise along. Oh, and uh, there's some some folks asking about our gnomifications. You can get gnomified, which is our SMS notification system. If you go to our website, theartsherpa.com, right there on the main page, there's some information about it. And uh, yeah. No, I'm just, I'm, I'm just saying hi to everybody. Hello. Hi. All right. Yes, definitely should be gnomified. Well, I'm just filling in the, filling no, in the I time. No, I love that we have gnomes now. Oh, I'm going to do like the green. I love that we have gnomes. We need the gnomes. There, there'll be international gnomes soon. Right now, they're just <laughs> they're United States gnomes. They, so I'm going to pull my green paint. They have to get their passports. Into my brush a little bit back and forth. And I'm going to get a smidge. Be careful with this part. A smidge of your black paint to darken it. If you get too much black, it's going to gray out your color. But if you're cautious with it, it's going to be perfect. And you can see I'm just... Look, I roll it out. This is, again, a number eight cat's tongue. And you've already learned how to do this, right? So I'm going to come from right here, and I'm going to make a little stem down. Just pressing that little stem down. And then, you know, you come right here. 
and finish your flower with this dark green. You can even kind of flip one of these out if you want to, and that's going to let your stem feel like it's really set in there. I like to make sure that green, and then I'm going to come and get a little of my yellow. I'll get a little water to improve the flow. And I come just on the top of a couple of these, real lightly, right over the top, wet into wet. And then I'm going to come down the right side of my stem. And that's all you have to do for a clover. You're done with the clover. You've learned how to paint that flower. Is that not too fun? Yeah. Oh, I love it. All right. So when you have your clover in, you're going to get your nice little scruffy brush. And I like to start with a little bit of my black. I pull out a little black and a little bit of blue mixed together because I think that they work out real well. And where I have him sort of in, I'm going to go fluff, 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 fluff. See with this little scruffy brush? This is a number six Cambridge and it's got kind of like a little rough edge. Just sort of a drier brush. I'm going to just on the edge here say so go fluff, 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 fluff. You cannot over fluff your bee. A well fed bee is an adorable bee. Well, this is a bumblebee. They're like the peaceful one. This is like the one that lived in the lady's hand. This is this is this bee. All bees should be like this. They'd be like, ah, be terrific. See, and I'm just making these short little strokes, and that's sort of implying like the fur nature of Mr. Bumbly Bumbly Bumblebee. Bumbly Bumbly Bumble. It's super fun. Now I can grab a little bit of white right now because there's a little bit of blue in here and I can come on the back, maybe imply a little bit of little fuzz. See how I do? Yeah. And a little bit at the belly. Could be some right here at the middle of the back. And then I think it could be fun to have a little bit at the front, like where the fluffy face could be. So I've got all that's a little place. I've got just a little bit of gray. I'm going to rinse out. And dry off on my towel. And now I'm going to do an interesting thing. I'm going to get a little of my yellow over here. And I'm going to get a smidge of black into it. And see, I'm making this sort of yellowish black. The yellowed gray. There we go. So not generally a pretty color we normally think about painting with. But I'm going to go ahead and get some of this white into that worked in. Right. And I'm going to wipe off on my towel the extra paint. So it's got a very light co covering of paint. See, on my towel, I'm wiping it off. And then when I come here, I'm going to come right up the center, making an arc line. It can come off the painting. I'm going to come back and bisect here. And then all this in here, like I'm just going to dry brush really lightly. See how I'm doing? Mm -hmm. Just a light little dry brush. And that's the trick is just making sure you don't have too much paint on the brush because you want some of the sky. I'm going to make a second little wing right here. You want some of the sky to be showing through. A second little wing right here. That's not a little dry brush. Oh, my gosh. He's so cute. Is he not cute? Very cute. Karen's so excited. She's like, this is a fast painting. This is, this is fast, this is fun, and after we get our patrons through their current crowdfunder painting and the St. Jude people through theirs, I'm going to show everyone how to do a really big version of this with a bunch of clover and a bunch of bees and a really hysterical scene for, like, the back of the sofa. Oh, I'm looking for, forward to it. For oh. patrons. All right. So, while she's doing that, I'm going to say, yeah, we've, like I said, so many changes are going on here. I'll fill, uh, you know, the website, you guys should check that out. Um, we have a new rating system. So that uh, if you go in and log in, you guys can go in and rate the hoot of projects. So if you, uh, you can also at the bottom uh, of the page, you can leave a comment and upload your picture that you've done of that project. So all of those features are now up and working on our website. We'll have a whole lot more um, information available for you guys out there. But 
we would love to know what you guys think. I was telling about the hoot meter rating. Oh, I know. I'm so excited about the hoot meter. So excited about the hoot meter. Who has access to the hoot meter right now? Uh, I believe the patrons and uh, the betas, beta right? testers do. And then probably at the end of this week on Friday, it will roll out to everybody else. Oh, awesome. Yeah, we do try to test it before we release it. Before we release the Kraken. All right, I am cleaning off my brush and I'm just making sure I don't have any extra paint on here. And then I'm gonna come in and put a little bit of my yellow in. Now to do that, I'm gonna come at first, I'm gonna get a mixture of my yellow and white just initially. And I'm gonna fluff in a little bit of the B. Now some of me adding the white is because I know you guys might be painting like with basics or very thin transparent paint. And you may not have access to paints like Holbine, and so that's why I give this little demo by adding a little white pigment to your yellow. You can see I'm just doing little dashing for like brush strokes. See how that goes? Fur, 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 fur. I'm gonna come right here and go fur, 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 fur. Fuzzy, 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 fuzzy. I don't know if fur or modified something on insects. Sometimes they have modified modifications. I'm gonna come up here and be like fur, fur. A little bit on the cheek. Okay. Each bee gets a little bit of a different personality I found with me because I'm be like, you need this. And then I'm, I'm doing it and the bee's like, what are you talking about? I'm going to take a little of my plain yellow and a little of my quinacridone. I like to add a little of this sort of orange to the bee. Can we see how that's done? A little bit of that orangeness to the furs. Little fuzzes, definitely the cheek. This is like the blush right there. Yeah, it's a little blushy. Oh, it's always so cute, but I want to blend in his little stuff. So I'm going to get more yellow, and I'll just make sure that that little brightness is blended in because I don't want him to seem patchy. He's not patchy to be. Maybe it's patchy to be. <laughs> Maybe this is patchy to be. <laughs> I love painting little bees. They're like painting little owls for me. All right, sorry. I'm very happy doing this. They're really good. Owl. I'm going to get my number two filbert. This is a detail brush that's in the shape of a filbert. I'm going to go ahead and load up a little bit of my white paint. And I'm going to come in here and imply a little sort of cellular little segmented structures to the wings. See I'm doing? Or go puzzle, and you puzzle it out so there's little shapes between them that's going to be kind of nice sort of a dry brush it's a very transparent little effect i come right here up and make a little cellular transmission another one right there and there that's pretty good now i like to get a little of my white and my black together and i'm going to make a soft gray initially i'm going to come here and i've got to do this so you can see it I'm gonna make a little eye and I'm gonna basically, I know it's a little kawaii how I do this. That's like Japanese for so cute. You gotta say so cute. Very important. Grabbing a darker color and I'm just making sure I'm putting in my shape. So it's like a large watermelon seed is how I get in that eye. And that dark gray is going to let me play with uh, reflections and a couple of things when I put in my black to him. Now, it's a good time to take out your black fluid paint. And I'll go ahead and just put this on my number two filbert because it's pretty sharp. And I'm going to make a couple little antennae. And what I like to do is I like to come up oh, a little bit in front of the eye and I'm going to make a little line and then I'm going to break. All right like a little line, it goes break, and then it goes a little line. And they're sort of connected, but not. It's really sort of fun. Now right here, we're gonna say that there's another little set of little antennae. And I like how if they're sort of crookedy and edgy, that that's actually a good thing. Now I'm gonna bring a little leg here. We're gonna hug our little stem. We hug our flowers. Got a, got a little, little, little foothold. Because we're taking care of the little flowers and we like to crawl over them and look for the little pollens. Sorry. <laughs> I have really positive feelings about uh, 
bumblebee. <laughs> oh, I, everybody else here does too. They're all super happy with the bumblebee. The fat. Is it like weird how like it's just wonderful when things are a little bit hefty in like the animal kingdom and fluffy? Well, that means that they're they that they they've eaten well and they're healthy and happy. And I'm just saying, I wish that were true for people. <laughs> <laughs> I wish that's what we said. We're like, oh, she's so cute, adorable, and fluffy. But you rarely hear that about a person. And I think we should. I'm taking a little bit of a black line, and I'm coming up along the top of the, the wing, and I'm just on the little edge here. I think it's wonderful to be happy. I like And I this like bee. it when I have fluffy hair days. <laughs> my hair is fluffy. Your bee hair days. When I have my bee hair days. It's bloof. All right. When I have all this in, I'm going to come in and play with the eye a little bit. I'm going to grab my jet black paint right here. Is this the precursor to the beehive? <laughs> and I'm going to paint just inside the seed a little bit with this black, but I'm leaving a little gray lip. Can you guys see I'm leaving a little gray? A little bit of that little gray sort of unpainted, and I can come right here behind it with the line so you see the little gray little line. Oh, yeah, you're so close on that, John. They can see everything. The bee? Of the bee. The bee is there. The bee. The bee. The bee is adorable. I'm going to put a little white paint, but I'm going to recognize that this is plug this time and not pour it all over the table. <laughs> it was embarrassing last time. I'll just pour a little bit out until you I can scoot get... that scoochie the pad up when you're done. Oh, do I? Oh, yeah. Scooch. There it goes. Okay. So I'm going to get a little bit of white on the tip of my brush. And I'm going to go ahead and just on the outside of the eye, I'm going to do tap, tap. And look, like, let's tap a little reflection on the little bee leg. Because these little, like, shiny, like, exoskeletons are really cool. And you notice those in insects. that They have these, like, like high reflections, like, on the thorax and weird little bit. You can even put, like, maybe a little dot of that in the wing section. Getting a little, little excited. Now... A little bit of gray at first on my reflection. You can use the heavy bodied or the fluid if you want something kind of light. Oh, yeah. And then I'm going to come right here. And I'm going to just tap in that little reflection shape. Go tap, 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 and a little random edge there, a little bit down. And then in front of it, I tap another little reflection. And then I'm going to rinse out. Make sure you don't have that weird little water drop. You never guys ever notice when you rinse out deep, there's that weird traveling little water drop. Got to watch for that little guy. He's going to come and get you. And I'm going to add a high reflection in the eye with just a couple dots. And he's just perfect. So I feel like I can grab a little of my pink and white here and flip this on the side. And just go, it's Sherpa time. Oh, wow. Wow, this was fast. It just, it's fun. It's fast. You can do this with the whole family. It's such a good painting party, one for you and your friends to do. It's great for you and the kids. And again, um, if you're in, if you're one of our supporters, our patrons, um, after we get our current two projects done, I do a big bee thing, mostly because I would like a bee painting over the sofa. So that would be awesome. Doing. The more bees, check out the other bee in the eye card because we did the one, the thistle. This will match the one with the thistle already on the YouTube channel. Do all the bees you want. Stick them on all the flowers. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. Be kind. And I want to see you at the easel really soon. Bye-bye.